Thank you for the introduction, and uh, it's my great pleasure to be invited here to speak. Um, so my, the title of my talk is Galois Repentations in the Cohomology of Shimura Varieties, in particular et al. Cohomology, and somehow I designed my talk to be more expository, so uh, probably I'll, experts might find my talk boring. I'll, my talk will have less details, and I mean, I thought uh, the people here have kind of wide range of backgrounds, so uh, that could be appropriate, but um, I'll, I'll try. OK, so let me talk about Shimura varieties first. So you have seen some key definitions already. Um, so I'll let GX be a Shimura datum. And well, I guess no one quite, quite defined. I, I'm not going to define it either, but it's G is a connected reductive group defined over Q, and X is the uh, uh, Hermitian symmetric domain given by GR conjugates class of homo real homomorphisms from the Delian torus to GR. Um, and basically, there is a general theory associating a nice inverse system of varieties for any sufficiently small open compact subgroup of geofinite adels. And this guy is defined over reflex field E, which is finite over Q, and it's quasi projective and smooth variety over this field. Um, and kind of well-known example is the case of Ziegel modular variety. So uh, you have already seen this GSP S plus minus, or maybe I'll stick in some number just to denote the dimension of the underlying symplectic vector space. Um, then basically you get the usual Ziegel modular variety. Um, and yeah, so S plus minus is the usual Ziegel upper and lower half spaces. Um, and has natural modular interpretation. Oh, wait. Um, now I'm not quite good at this. Is this OK? Uh, so, um, so I mean, the basic problem, I mean, one of many problems about Shimura varieties, but I mean, this one I particularly like is um, basically you want to compute the zeta function of, of this Shimura variety for each level subgroup K. Or I mean, another formulation of this problem is you want to study the et al. cohomology of the Shimura variety. So maybe I'll just take this constant coefficient or some interesting analytic coefficient LED coming from a locally constant shift. Um, so it's just the. Uh, Direct limit, and maybe I'll t t later consider the compact support et al. cohomology, and um, in any degree. And it turns out that I mean this is already true here. I mean, when you t take this inverse system of varieties, there's a hack action coming from elements of the finite adelic group of G, and uh, when you do this over E bar, there's a commuting Galois action. And basically, the problem is that, I mean, you try to describe this cohomology as a module over this action. 
And in particular, you have these two group actions, Galois group and the HECA, uh, the group G, giving HECA cross HECA action, and then the problem is basically to relate these actions to the Langlands correspondence. Yeah. And uh, for the group G, and I mean, it could mean two things. I mean, when a priori, I mean, in many instances, the Langlands correspondence is just a conjectural thing. So you might hope to actually construct instances of the correspondence by looking at this cohomology. So basically, it, it is a pretty good source of Galois representations. On the other hand, if you already know some Langlands correspondences already, then maybe you just interpret this in terms of the known Langlands correspondence. So, okay, so um, what, what's the idea? Um, I basically, it was a whole program pr proposed by Langlands, maybe partially inspired by Ihara. Um, basically, um, well, we, we have seen the integral models of Shimura varieties, at least in the case of good reduction, and when the Shimura varieties of, is of Hodge type, or maybe more generally of abelian type. Um, so when you have an integral model, you have this point on the, say, some elder ecology of finite field. So you take a place of place V of E over P, a prime, and then KV is just the, uh, the residue field at V. And so you look at these points, then, uh, I mean, when you have an integral model, this makes sense. And it carries the action of Hecke correspondences away from P, so away from points, adelic points away from P and infinity, and also the Frobenius. So the idea of Langlands is basically you study this special fiber and then describe the set of points as a set equipped with this group action. Um, and then what you would do is basically you compare two trace formulas. Um, well, what are the two trace formulas? I mean, there are one is the growth on the left sheets, the, the general fixed point formula for varieties in over finite fields. And the other is um, the Asa Selba trace formula for G, um, describing basically the space of automorphic forms. And the, what's nice about Shimura varieties is that, I mean, it has kind of this kind of dual aspects. I mean, it, it's an Eldrick variety, so you, you can apply this fixed point formula, but I mean, it's closely related to automorphic forms by construction. So actually, you can use also Selbach trace formula to get information, and then somehow, if you compare the uh, information, I mean, you get different information basically from these two formulas, and when you compare them, basically you can, you can analyze this Galois action at each finite prime, and that can almost pin down your Langlands correspondence, and in the case of bad reduction, there's also some strategy. Um, but to make this precise and discuss some results in this direction, I have to now recall some definition. So let's, let me try. Mm -hmm. ah, which one is it? Yes, yes. Then I can pull it down faster. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Um, so, so the definition of I mean, well, 
maybe this is the third time you see Shimura varieties of Hodge type. So. <laughs> Well, I can refer to Faultings and Kissin, but well, I mean, basically, if you have embedding of the group over Q inducing this, well, x to this s plus minus, then, I mean, you say that the Shimura datum is of Hodge type, and if this is true, then basically, you have this Shimura variety of GX embedded in the uh, Shimura variety of this GSP. And I mean, a priori, I'm just doing this over number field. So this guy, right hand side is defined over Q, left hand side over E. So this embedding is defined over E if you base change to E. Um, on the other hand, I mean, you want to work a little more generally for various reasons. I mean, Hodge type is nice because you have a kind of nice modular interpretation in terms of abelian schemes and Hodge cycles, but um, oftentimes your example doesn't actually uh, fall into this case. So you also consider something called abelian type, which is more general. And this is the case if you can find some hash type datum such that uh, it's equipped with map of derived subgroups inducing isomorphism of the adjoint datum. In the obvious sense, I mean, that induces a nice morphism of the group, and then this x prime ad is mapped isomorphically onto x ad. Um, so, well, basically, I mean, there's a classification that's, which appears in the Lin's article, and basically, you have type A, B, C, and some type D. Um, go into this case, whereas, I mean, probably few people care, but I mean, these exceptional cases are not of abelian type. Um, um, so that's quite general, but in fact, I have some example in mind, I mean, also to make this concrete. Um, uh, maybe, actually, I. I'm going to use this later, so maybe I'll do this on the sideboard. I mean, main example for my talk, not in this theory. Um, so, well, I like to consider a totally real field. Totally real number field, and um, well, actually, uh, let me take the set S, which is a set of primes. Well, so let's say there's a distinguished infinite place of F called V0. So I consider all infinite places, which is not equal to V0. And maybe, possibly, I consider some finite place um, or empty set such that the cardinality is, is even where this is a finite place. So, in, in other words, if the uh, degree of the totally real field is odd, then you don't do anything. If the degree is even, you just add one finite place to make the cardinality even. And you consider the group, say, G0. Define over F, which is an inner form of G S P two N and which is a compact at the infinite place 
contained in S and uh, non quasi split at VSD if VSD exists, and then quasi split everywhere else or sp actually split. So, uh, and I, I'm running out of space, so maybe I should go to the other side. Um, so what is G and what is X? I take G to be the restriction of scalar of G naught and X. Well, let me not go into the details of X, but let me just say that, I mean, there are infinite places and, well, because I'm taking restriction of scalar, this morphism uh, from the Dillian torus to GR can be defined component, I mean, place by place at the infinite places of F. So basically, you take this to be trivial at V naught equal to V naught and the kind of usual, usual guy at V naught. Usual means, I mean, in the same way as you define this for Ziegel modular varieties. Okay? Um, because you get just the split GSP to N at that place. So it turns out that this is an abelian type Shimura datum. And somehow, if you don't like this gene, uh, description of gene out, by the way, I mean, you can use Gala cohomology to show that such a form exists and actually unique up to isomorphism, but um, you can also realize it more concretely in terms of some Hermitian rank N module over uh, quaternion algebra defined over F. And in fact, I mean, when N equals one, this is exactly what we are familiar with. Any, N is one and F is any total real field, then this basically, you get Shimura curve and when F is Q and N is anything, then you get the usual Ziegel guy, but in general, this is something else. Um, so, so I'll look at this uh, Shimura variety of abelian type later, but I'll just point out that that's a kind of supposed to be an interesting example when we somehow try to understand color representations in the cohomology of more varieties, especially in the case of GSP group. Um, okay, so let me now talk about uh, this description of points over finite fields with some group action. And basically, it, there is a precise conjecture given by Langlands and Rappaport. And now, large, well, large number of cases are proven. So let's dis recall this result. So um, let me take GX to be of abelian type, and now any abelian type, and assume that P is greater than two, and well, I guess I want GQP to be unreified, meaning that it's quasi-split and splits over an unreified extension of QP, and uh, I take as before P over V, uh, V over P, um, and am I forgetting anything else? Mm. Yeah, I also want to maybe take K to be decomposed into P part and away from P part. And basically what, what I like to do is keep KP to be hyperspecial, some hyperspecial subgroup, and then vary the level subgroup away from P. So we just get an inverse system, but keeping K, K sub P fixed. So. Um, let's 
So what is the statement of the conjecture? Oh, that's too high. No. OK, so. So first of all, let me recall that, I mean, I said it, but I mean, Kissin and Basio basically proved that the, uh, the integral model exists, smooth integral model exists. For this, so I'm keeping case of P and varying k upper p, so if this exists, then it's uniquely characterized by some extension property. Well, but it's not going to be too important for my talk. It's some sort of something similar to evaluative criterion for mixed characteristic DVR. Um, and now we can make sense of the special fiber, now uh, what is the theorem? Um, well, basically, you have an equivariant bijection. Uh, let's say g away from k and infinity, and also center of gqp, and also the Frobenius. Equivariant bijection between this set of points over, say, FP bar of KP. Uh, and I'll write down and explain the notation. Well, actually, some of the notation appeared in some sense in Mark's talk but some didn't. So it's kind of, uh, theorem has this kind of form. Um, if you're familiar with complex points of Shimura varieties, then you see kind of similar description for complex points, but it's, it's a little bit different. So I'm not going to define all the notation. But I mean, one way to read this formula is uh, phi is, or basically say we are in the Hodge type case, and then basically you, phi is your isogenic class of abelian schemes with additional data, and I phi is the automorphism group, as you have seen before, um, some automorphism group, and and this guy is basically parameterizing points in a given isogeny class. And I'll say a little more in the case of um, GL2, uh, just, just for people who are not familiar with this. But, um, the, but actually, the theorem is true up modulo some important caveat. So, let me say that first and then give an example. So the problem is that um, I mean, it's not literally true, but this I phi of Q action could be twisted. Um, so, I mean, of course, I mean, there's a natural action of these groups, uh, but <laughs> turns out that, um, and I phi, I mean, naturally acts on this product G times XP phi, whatever they are, I'll explain in a moment, but, Basically, this, uh, 
this on the right hand side, this uh, kind of natural, there's a natural action. Maybe twisted by some element in the adjoint group of I phi. Um, so what this means is that um, I mean, after you twist this action by whatever this element is, I mean, after twisting by this element, you get an equivariant bijection, but you may not a priori get the bijection, so literally. And as I'll explain, I mean, this causes some trouble. Um, but for now, let me make this precise. Instead of really writing down the definition, it's not going to the precise definition is not going to play an important role in my talk, so rather I just give an example. Um, in which case, I mean, when g is GL2 over q, we all know that you get something like uh, elliptic modular curve. Um, so phi basically should give you some isogeny class of elliptic curves over, say, fp bar. Um, and what this, what this guy is doing is basically you sort of measure the relative position of, of the, uh, well, piadic Tate module or maybe a tau cohomology of E of, say, how should I write this? Z hat upper p, or if you like to consider the tape module away from p, and then basically this guy lives in the uh, rank two module of the Adele, Adele's away from p and infinity. So you just you have some sort of lat two lattices, and basically this element GL2 of this guy basically measures the relative position. And similarly, you can imagine what this guy should do. Well, basically, you measure relative position of Dudonet modules in the rational Dudonet module. So, basically, uh, E over, I don't know, well, w, w frac of WFP. So, let, I'll just say L using Mach notation. So, frac, fraction field of fit vector ring of FP bar. Uh, maybe there's some objection. <laughs> uh, and, well, this I phi is basically the usual automorphism of elliptic curves. Um, so, and you can also describe XP phi group theoretically, but, I mean, in terms of some subset of GL2 of L modulo GL2 of W, W being the fit factoring, but well, I'll just skip that point. And instead, let me move on to discuss what this theorem is good for. I mean, why do you do this? I mean, I kind of explained in the int introduction that, um, I mean, for instance, you can use this to compute the zeta function of Shimura varieties or describe the cohomology with Galo and Hecke action, and that I think was actually an important motivation for Langlands. And um, so you probably want to do this, I mean, deduce this from the theorem. So oh, maybe I'll switch the board. Uh, I just it, it removed caveat. It doesn't mean that there's no caveat, so I should put that back in. <laughs> um, so.
so the next part of my talk is basically count, counting points on, in the sense that I want to count points to, for the purpose of comparing the two trace formulas. So in the growth and the, in the growth and the left shift formula, basically computing cohomology amounts to counting points, counting fixed points. So let's do this. Um, and not going to, again, give details, but I'll just give you some outline and what are the uh, issues. Because I'm understanding that probably you might be interest, more interested in applying this kind of results rather than just going through the details. Um, so the outline is as follows. So the, the first thing you do is, as I said, you apply the fixed point formula. And well, what do you get? And that basically you have some element in the Heck algebra, meaning that uh, it's a locally constant. Uh, Serious objection. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Maybe I should stop my talk. <laughs> uh, somehow you didn't have the same problem. OK, good. Um, maybe it's my oh, shirt. Um, so yeah, it's a locally constant, compactly supported function in the geofinite Adels away from p. And then j is some integer. And um, well, so what you like to compute is basically you can use fp to account for the hack action away from p. and you can also make Frobenius act in the, in the cohomology of Shimura variety with constant coefficient. Whereas you can also do this with athletic shift coming from a representation of G. But if you can get a good formula for this, then basically you can understand the homology with Hecke and Gallo action. And of course, as usual, I'm taking the alternating sum here. Um, so what is, what do I get? Well, at least I expect to get some horrible formula. I'll write down and explain a little bit, but actually the this formula is not important <laughs> for the expository purpose. by p depending on j. And so it's some coefficient depending on the triple, um, some constant. And then I'll just say that gamma node is some element of GQ modulo stable conjugates. See, more or less is conjugates class of GQ modulo GQ bar action. And gamma and delta are basically adelic elements living in, well, G of adels away from P, finite adels away from P, and delta is something living in G of finite extensions, finite unrefined extension of QP. But I'll just say where this come from, because again, this is not terribly important for me. I mean, it basically comes from absolute Frobenius on the Dudenay module. And then uh, this is basically the usual Frobenius in the uh, et al. cohomology or Tate module. So, so, so Tate module or et al. cohomology away, away from P. And I mean, here O means just the usual orbital integral according to the conjugation action, but T O means the twisted orbital integral, and 
basically the twisting comes from the fact that the absolute flow bin is not linear, but only semi-linear. Um, but again, the point is not to know the precise definition of these terms, but um, the point is to realize that this resembles, actually I forgot some condition here, but I'll get to that, uh, resembles the uh, geometric side of the trace formula. So for the lack of space, I write TF for the trace formula. Um, just the uh, realization that um, once you work it out, uh, the tr comparison of trace formula is actually very plausible. Because in particular, you don't see any abelian schemes floating around and now everything is group theoretic and in terms of conjugate classes and orbital integrals and basically that kind of allows you to compare this to, with the uh, asa selbach trace formula through the geometric side but actually there's one more condition. I mean, there's some compatibility condition but also an important condition is that, I mean, there's some condition in terms of Galois cohomology saying which triples should contribute. Even if somehow these three elements are compatible with each other, there's some obstruction coming from Galois cohomology. And I'm not going to define it, but rather I'll explain where this comes in in a moment. Um, so let's, that's kind of step one. I mean, there is some work involved, but I'll also discuss known results in a moment. But let me just get to step two and three and explain what is known and what we can get. So I'll be brief about the next steps. Because basically, the next thing you have to do is to stabilize the right hand side, I mean, it's kind of a I mean, common term in the trace formula business, but basically you make, it, somehow you write it in term, as a linear combination of stable orbital integrals or it's basically you, on stable orbital integrals on the group itself where it's quasi split in a form, but also as, a, as well as some endoscopic groups for G. So, did I say something wrong? Uh, um, so, but I mean, there's a usual procedure and it's, I mean, it's, it's not exactly the same as in the usual stabilization. You cannot, for instance, just import now that like Arthur and also Meglan Valspeje proved the stabilization of say, even twisted trace formula, can we just use their result? I mean, the answer is no because something funny is happening at P and infinity and still you have to go through the process. You cannot just import their results. Um, and basically once you stabilize, I mean, there's some, Calm down, calm down. <laughs> Stop it? Uh, I think it's okay now, but okay. Uh, so, sorry about the interruption. Um, and then the uh, is next you extract basically spectral information from this. And I mean, by, as I said several times, by comparison of trace formulas. So, what would you want to do um, is, I mean, first, let me note that, I mean, really to do this in complete generality, you need to assume Arthur's various conjectures by Arthur and others um, about the classification of automorphic representations and local representations of G. Um, uh, basically, you need to have pretty complete information 
about the endoscopy of G, which you don't have in general for arbitrary group. But like even for groups like unitary or symplectic groups, there's a subtle difference between unitary groups and unitary similitude groups and symplectic groups and sim general symplectic groups. And, um, so there's some annoying thing here. Um, but let me say, what do we know after Langland and Langland's Rappaport after they describe this strategy in details? Um, and of course, there's a lot of work in the PL case. And I just want to talk about some known results outside the PL case. And because um, I mean, my understanding is that for step one, I mean, it's more or less a standard procedure um, by and <laughs> describe in detail. <laughs> Maybe it's not standard. Oh, no. Uh, what, what's going on? Uh, so, Katwitz and Milne basically uh, gave how to gave an argument how to deduce this from the Langlands Rappaport conjecture, um, and with some caveats, w which I'll explain. And steps two and three, um, basically, sketch it by Katwitz in his famous Ann Arbor article, um, and. Uh, Although he restricts himself to the PL case, I mean, actually, the argument basically works in uh, much more generality. But now, the, unfortunately, these are written down under two hypotheses. First of all, drive subgroup of G is simply connected. And also, the rank of the central torus over Q is the rank of central torus over R. And if you think about this, actually, this is not, um, let's say this is 1 and 2. Then, and going back to the main example, because I mean, the symplectic group is simply connected, so 1 is OK, but 2 is not OK, unless f is equal to Q. So, um, so that. You have to do something there without this hypothesis. But also, another problem is that I mean, step one doesn't quite work because of caveat in the theorem of Langland's Rappaport conjecture. So, so, well, if there there were no no caveat. Meaning that, I mean, this I phi Q action could be twisted. And let me explain why this is the case. And that's because uh, if you twist this action, then you can twist, I mean, a priori, this condition is unstable under this twisting. So if you're summing over different triples, then I mean, you're pretty much screwed. Um,
is uh, well, current status is a hot type is actually okay and uh, something like the main example that I got here is okay and here are some other cases but we don't seem to have the general opinion type um, and I mean, kind of the idea is maybe you should pin pin down this. I mean, in the caveat, you have this twisting by some element of i phi adjoint uh, adelic group, and maybe you should get some more information about this twisting, even though you don't remove it completely to get all cases. But why does that then doesn't matter? In the case of last time, um, maybe I'll go into details, but basically, uh, I mean, you can make an argument essentially showing that this cosmic invariant doesn't change actually, um, and that uses the existence of special points. And existence of special points, basically, I mean, if you are familiar with the PL type case, basically, you can use the making to prove the vanishing of objects in there or <coughs> special points, and basically you can use this argument to show that this object there somehow doesn't change under this twist of action. Do you mean the result that the bar the top that is one? Um yes, related, but yeah. Yeah, this is only the uh G's on round five. Yeah, this always assumed that G's on rank five over Q C that's always assumed. Um, and, but let me, I mean, that's kind of boring statement of theorem, so let me just give a sample result I mean, what this actually tells us more concretely. <coughs> so, I think this can go away. Um, so, what is it? Oh, three means, oh, three is the, yeah, three. Three. sorry, that is the caveat, yeah, so. But I mean, this argument a priori works when you don't have this twist, twist of I phi that Q action. Basically, uh, uh, 
R pi is essentially the following representation. And you might as well just describe locally at each prime B where things are unrainified. Um, so for almost all B, um, this is given by First of all, you take the random parameter for um, space. So, random parameter is defined on the Bay group over QP, but you restrict it to the Bay group at B. So, you get this parameter into L, L over B, and then you take this certain representation. Determined by basically the data x. Um, so R mu x and B mu x is basically a, some highest grade representation. <coughs> on G hat, because I mean this mu x is a whole character of G coming from x of the conjugation, and then that gives you a weight or G hat, and then you take the highest weight representation of G hat, and then there's a way to extend it to LG by making the dollar of acting trivial and the highest weight vector. So, and basically, that you can prove that this is essentially that representation. Essentially, it means that I'm ignoring twists and signs and multiplicity and all, all sorts of these things. Um, Okay. Yeah, so uh, and the role of this VST is in Oh, here. So here, oh, sorry, I mean the I'm just not, VST is there, but I'm, I might not be included in the set I mean, I'm still, in practice, I'll still have VST, but it's just a matter of whether you make G's split or not. Pi is always sustained by some finite place. And the goal of this hypothesis is that um, basically you can bypass some problems like after this conjecture. Also, you can almost bypass step two, the stabilization process is basically uh, pretty trivial. Um, so that's kind of sample results you can get. And then in the final part of my talk, I'll tell you about the application of this to GSP. And oh, so let's see what I can do. So, this is not needed anymore. Infinite component is homological. 
in the sense that it has non-trivial real or homology when tensor with some irreducible out of the representation. And spin regular means that <coughs> the L parameter is regular after composing with the spin representation. So that means basically um, if I put I mean there exists some infinite place P naught such that if I consider the L parameter value in the dual of GSP, which is just spin, I have spin representation and I assume that this composition is regular. So it's a pretty strong condition. Yeah, it's a, I mean, regular, I mean, when you restrict to WC, you just get a regular vocab. So it's not fixed under the value of GL to the end. Um, under these conditions, basically, uh, just regular. <coughs> yeah, I mean, this and then also, I mean, one does not imply the other. Um, Our oh, highest weight need not be regular, just homological. So, I mean, for instance, when something like weight smaller for me. But then, I mean, you might actually actually remove it when n, as soon as n is large. Then this guy is not going to be regular. Yeah. So, very soon you, you're going to exclude it anyway. Okay, so the. Um, and what is the theorem? I mean, the, I'm also fixing isomorphism between C and Q and R. Um, it's kind of implicit, and and what Arno and I prove is basically that there is existing associated power condition. So valued in this thing. Well, because I'm you know, running out of time, maybe I'll be very brief. Basically, this that almost all primes <coughs> B doesn't belong to some bad places. Finite <coughs> and bad places, and they are finite dimensions. <laughs> well, you can describe them uh, explicitly, but Away from bad places, in particular when these guys have to be unmatified and then um, the color recognition associated to pi by unmatified local elements, and also, and in particular here, it's not an analytic place, and if V is an analytic place and pi V is unmatified, <coughs> and V is not one of the bad places, and it could be a bad place, then you don't get anything. Um, then, then you get a crystal in representation. Somehow, it's useful for applications. Um, so this, this, this is the thing that's actually involving the guy. Pardon? That, that's not phrase involving the guy. Phrase involving the guy. They say that they've entered the realm of thin speculation. I think it's this theorem. Maybe, yes. <laughs> yeah, I should, yeah. I should, I should take a look at it. Um, and kind of a couple of remarks about the theorem. I mean, we can say something a little more about this. For instance, you can say what the hot state rates are, and uh, rather right, hot state for characters are, and things like that. But, and also, you can remove this spin regular assumption by the usual eigenvalue argument, I mean, you have to do work a little bit more with, I mean, you have to take this faithful representation of this game. So there's some work involved there, but you can do it. And also you can combine this with the uh, potential over multi result of Barnum Lab, G. Garrity, Taylor. You can prove the metamorphic indication of the spin out function. Under slightly stronger assumption, which we will call spin 
regular with capital letters, which means that for all infinite places, this is true. That corresponds to the uh, this color condition composed with spin being multiplicity free uh, when you consider the positive weights. Uh, and I plan to sketch the idea of construction, but I have no time. Those two minutes. Thanks to the malfunction of my but, Well, basically, it, I'll just point out um, one thing, which is, I mean, obviously, I mean, from the design of my talk, it's obvious that I'm going to use the Schumer variety GX in the example to construct this. But a priori, what's not clear is, also you can see from this example above, I mean, a priori, what you get in the cohomology is only this representation and not the one here. And a priori, it's, it doesn't seem easy how to show that this map should factor through some distinct group. So basically, for this, we have to consider another approach using some liftings from uh, there is kind of top-down approach, but also you can kind of construct the representation into SO2 n plus 1 using other results and if there is results uh, in the self field case. And you can also try to lift and then somehow I mean, you get this representation out of the tensions between these two approaches. I'll have to stop here.